Hey everybody, and welcome to episode 9 of Game Night Date Night. Uh, Game Night Date Night is in collaboration with Games and Couples. Uh, Games and Couples concentrates on couple um, counseling, utilizing board game as a tool to help uh, couples connect with each other. Um, and I think that's just amazing. Now, one of the things they've done is they've created a rating system to help couples select games that would best, uh, best suit their current needs. Now, in this rating system, keep in mind, five is not good, one is not bad. It just depends on where you are as a couple. So the first thing that they rate on is conversation and connection potential. So maybe playing board games at the end of the day is how you guys come together, connect, catch up with each other. So having a game where you can have more conversation is probably better for that, uh, for that goal. Um, or maybe things have been tense. Conversation flare up easily. So how do you spend quality time with somebody that's uh, in that situation? So a game that has a lower uh, score in this one might be a little bit more suitable for your current situation. Um, the next thing that they rate on is getting to know you. Um, so maybe it's a newer relationship and having a game where you get to know each other a little bit better is is what you're looking for or maybe you know you're spending more time with each other or maybe <laughs> your empty nester is now and all of a sudden the focus and the household is changing so getting to know each other again is a goal or maybe it, it's not and it's not something that's a big concern of yours so then a lower rating might be better um, and then the last one is potential for hurt feelings and conflict let's face it most of the time when you play a board game there is a winner and there's a loser um, and because of that, depending on how that comes to be, it can create some hurt feelings or some, uh, you know, some, some bad conflict. And if you're in a relationship where things are already tense, you may want to concentrate on something that has a lower score. Or maybe you're working on conflict resolution and having um, a game as a safe environment to kind of work on that might be what you're looking for. So this, um, this month, I've kind of showcased different games each week, and I've concentrated on Halloween-themed or horror-themed games just because of Halloween coming up. So the first game that was showcased this month is Boo. Um, now, Boo is really neat, and it's a tiny, tiny game. This is from the pack of game series, so it's the shape of a very small pack of gum. Um, and you have these cards that you play. This is a two-player game. And it's basically an area control where you're trying to have the, the cards showcase a ghost of your color. So one player plays as the white ghost, one player plays as the black ghost. And then you'll be placing the cards so that the way that the ghost is glancing, it'll glance to, through ghosts of its own color. But if it's like, let's say a white ghost is looking until it reaches a black ghost, if that black ghost is looking back at it, nothing happens. But if that black ghost is actually looking in a different direction, then you get to spook the ghost and you flip the card over. And on the other side, it's the reverse. So if there was a black ghost, it becomes a white ghost and it also faces in a different direction. So each card has three ghosts. So you're trying to manipulate the cards to make it so that at the end of the game, you have the most of your own ghosts showing. That's a neat puzzly game. Now, so let's have a look at the, the rating system here. So in conversation and connection potential, I've given this one a four out of five here. Um, this is a fairly simple game, doesn't require tons of attention. Uh, you're just kind of looking, trying to figure out. So you can hold a conversation fairly easily while playing this game. Uh, for the getting to know you, I'm giving this one a two out of five. This is, um, you're kind of looking at the different strategies. There's it's not a very revealing game. You're not going to kind of make life-shattering decisions or uh, discuss very deep, deep thoughts or deep decision kind of facing in this game. So it's just, it's light. So I'm giving this one a 2 out of 5 for the getting to know you. Now, Hurt Feelings and Conflict, giving again a 2 out of 5. It is frustrating when you place the cards and then all of a sudden they flip it over and it's like, oh, darn, I was planning on utilizing that. But... It is part of the game, um, and that's it. There's, I mean, it's kind of like you will play the game kind of like, okay, I really hope they don't notice this particular move, and then they might. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a fairly 
low-key game, so hurt feelings and conflicts is fairly low in this one. Um, I'm just going to show you the other picture. This is how the game starts. So you have these seven cards, no, I guess it's eight cards kind of setting up the cemetery gate, and then you add cards to it. So the cards can be uh, facing up and down in any direction. And then you once you activate the card, you do have to activate every ghost on that card. So you'll be playing cards that have your ghost and they'll put and they'll have other players the other players' ghosts, but you have to uh, kind of follow the glance of the other players' ghost as well, and it might flip one of your own card. Now maybe that'll be to your advantage, maybe it won't be. And you get to decide in what order you want to activate these ghosts. It was really neat. I was super impressed with this game, mostly since it is such a tiny, tiny game. Um, the next week we showcased this week was Mansion of Madness. This game is amazing. Now this is an app-driven game, so that means you play along with a smart device, iPad or smartphone, that will kind of walk you through the story. Now the good thing of that is it makes learning this game quite easily because the tutorial normally is built in at the same time and it tells you what to do. So with this one there's different scenarios that you can play and you'll start with kind of the main room and you put the tile down and then the details and the artwork on those tiles are really good. This is a neat looking game. And you have the app going so you have this spooky deep voice telling you like what's happening in the store. You arrive at this mansion because you were contacted because something's going on and you get there and there's nobody here but you can hear some noise in the distance. You know or whatever they kind of set this the story and set the mood and it is so entertaining. Um, and then You'll kind of, you know, everybody kind of goes and you have a goal. Well, you don't even really know what the goal is. You got to explore this mansion, trying to figure out what's going on and what needs to happen. Um, so you'll go, you can go and say, okay, well, I noticed a door there, so I'll go in that room. So on the app, you'll show I'm going through here. So then the app will say, okay, bring card A7. I don't know if it's A7 or just a number, but anyway, so then you go through the tiles and you bring in A7. So it's a specific map that you're going to be building. And then it'll be like, okay, you notice there's a weapon in the corner and there's an object over here among the paperwork. And then the, so there's all these different things that you can go and explore in the room. It's very thematic, very story driven, and I really like this game. Um, and this is Cthulhu themed, so you're you know, going around trying to investigate what's going on, trying to solve what's going, um, tr trying to solve the mystery, and at the same time, you're trying not to take damage health-wise, and you're also trying to take damage sanity-wise. Great, great game. Um, in conversation and connection potential, I've given this one a two out of five. You don't have time to hold a conversation. There's a story going on that the app is kind of walking you through. Now there are times where like, okay, you gotta click next to keep going, so there's a tiny little bit of space for that, but the story is developing as you're playing, so you probably won't be talking about anything else as you're playing. The getting to know you, I'm giving this one a three out of five. There's some s simple decisions, really kind of interesting, it's like, okay, so you could go into this room where there's a fire, but there is this item that you probably need, or you could try to go in this room, or you know, you could be like a bit of a coward. It's like, well, I'm just gonna go explore over here and then kind of leave this to you. It's like, so it's interesting to see what gets decided or what they're going to do. Um, now, some of these stuff is kind of like hidden as well. You may not be showing. It's like, oh, well, like <laughs> an insanity roll has gone insane. You look at the insanity card and you keep that secret. Um, and maybe you've gone insane and you don't trust anybody anymore. Now, my, this happened with my sister when I played with her once. And actually, the card said, nothing happens. You're strong-minded. And so she's like, okay, great. Good. But the rest of us, we didn't trust her anymore. So it still really affected the game. Because she's like, I don't know. Don't, don't let Ginny take that because she's gone insane. We don't know what's going on. Um, and it did make the game interesting as well. So some aspect a little bit hidden. Um, so you may not get a full sense of what they're going through. Some aspect is kind of out in the open. It is interesting to see how and what they're going to choose to do. Um, hurt feelings and conflict. I'm giving this one a one out of five because this is a cooperative game. The one thing with mention of madness, though, I find is because it is app driven and you kind of control what's happening on the app. It is really easy to kind of have the one person take over doing this and then the rest 
are more spectators than players in the game. So um, be aware of that because that could kind of create a bit of conflict if somebody's not feeling in, involved in the game. Here's another picture of that game. So you have your little minis that's going around this map. You have your character card and the items you'll be finding. You'll be finding spells and different things. And then you have those dice in the middle that you'll do for different like you do a sanity roll, you'll roll those dice, or maybe an observation roll, and you'll roll those dice, and um, just such a neat, neat game. I really enjoy this one. Um, next game we showcased this month was Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. So I'm a huge Pandemic fan. Um, it's a co-op game, and you know things are slowly spreading across the world and you're trying to take control now that's the regular pandemic reign of cthulhu is very much the same there's cultists kind of popping up across the world and they're trying to open these gates to allow these demons kind of into our world and we're trying to seal those gates because we're paranormal detective and we're trying to seal those and save the world basically um it's, you know, like each round you're going to draw some cards, you're going to move around. Um, if you ever come across one of the bigger monsters, you got to take a sanity roll because the horror of it kind of could shatter your mind. Um, and if that big monster, when they come out, so when there's a cultist and you'll be drawing cities or locations to see where they pop up, then if you ever get more than three, then they call in that bigger monster. So then that's there. Now each turn you'll draw a card that has the bigger monster symbol on it, it's going to move and then when it moves it tries to move to the closest portal that's close to it. And then once it reaches the portal, if you weren't able to stop it before it reaches the portal, it'll bring in one of the big monsters that's on top of the board. And let me show you what the board looks like so you'll see one of those top monsters are going to get revealed. Now there's multiple options of those monsters so each time you kind of randomly pick from so it will change from time to time. Now if the final monster which is Cthulhu, the old one, ever gets revealed, you lose the game. If you run out of cultists to put on the map because there's so many cultists all across the, the map then you'll lose the game as well. Um, and there's a few different ways to losing the game. Now to win the game, you need to seal all of those portals. Um, and if all of the characters playing go insane at the same time, then you lose the game. So in this game, you can go insane, but you can come back from it as well. Um, super interesting. I really enjoy this one. We played it and it was over really quick because we just, we lost so quickly. Um, now, for the rating system, for conversation and connection potential, I'm giving this one a 3 out of 5. Um, you're kind of flipping cards, you're doing the action. It's not a story-driven thing, so there's, you know, like, not a bunch of stuff that you have to read and kind of go through in between so you can hold a conversation while you're playing this game. Um, the getting to know you, I'm giving this one a 4 out of 5, mainly because you're planning on what's going to happen. It's a cooperative, so you're all discussing this together as like, okay, there's a lot of cultists over there. Maybe with your ability, you should go there and say, mm, yeah, true, but have you considered doing this? Because then if I go there, I might be able to close the portals. And, oh, yeah, maybe we should concentrate on that. Then you like, And so just having that conversation, that planning, you kind of get a sense of um, collaboration with the other player and kind of you know learn more about them as well. Hurt feelings and conflicts, again, I'm giving this one a 1 out of 5 because it is a cooperative game. So you're playing on the same side, trying to get towards the same goal. Um, it, I mean, it can happen where you just come to a disagreement, um, but most of the time, this one is fairly low in conflict. Um, and then again, that was the picture. It is a neat looking game too. Um, I, I do enjoy this one. Then the final game that we showcased this month is Humans. Um, now this is based on the series Zombies. Um, where you're trying to escape the zombie apocalypse and you're gonna start with a tile, you add tiles and you're trying to find the helicopter tile and get away. Now there's different variation that you can, scenarios you can play. 
Now, in this one, it's the reverse. You're the zombies, and you're trying to feed on humans. <laughs> so, But these pesky humans will be in buildings, and you have to break in in order to be able to get in. And sometimes they have weapons, and they fight back, and they'll escape. And then you maybe you do finally capture a human, and then you have to decide whether you're going to eat it or infect it or, you know, and it is kind of at the mercy of the cards a little bit, but then the other players can give them weapons and that sort of stuff. <laughs> It's neat. Uh, it's an interesting, and it's kind of neat because you start with the one tile and then you add more tiles and then more humans show up and then you add more. So you build like this whole city. It's it's interesting. Um, now let's have a look at the rating on this one. So for conversation and connection potential, I'm giving this one a two out of five. Um, there's a lot of things you're going putting the people out. You got to roll lots of time. You have the cards. So there's a lot of little things going on that you got to maintain and kind of keep control of it's like oh they got away then you got to roll and the humans move so many spaces and so there's that sort of minutia that happens so kind of limits a little bit the conversation you can have um getting to know you i'm giving this one a two out of five this is a competitive game possible it can be played cooperative i'm not sure there's different ways of playing this one but the main way to play it is competitive so you're not going to be discussing what your plans are out loud and kind of reveal what your goals are because then you won't be sending the humans that way when they're moving humans or it might affect the way they play. So there's not tons and tons of getting to know you in this one. Hurt feelings and conflict, I'm giving this one a 3 out of 5. You are competing with one another. Um, and even though like you kind of branch out, you're getting humans here, you're trying to get humans here, what gets really conflicting is like, because you'll roll, don't roll enough, you didn't capture the human. Sucks. There's a lot of uh, based on luck here, right? Because it's all about the dice. So then you'll roll, oh, great, I wasn't successful. And then maybe you roll and finally you've captured a human and you're finally about to be able to do something exciting, but then they give that human a shotgun and <laughs> causing it to be able to get away and so it can get frustrating when stuff like that happens or if a humans get away then you roll a dice okay well it's running away by this many space and they go in a building that you haven't broken an entrance into and it's kind of like <sighs> and then it's like kind of sets you back so much so it can be frustrating it is part of the game it's interesting um i am i did enjoy this one but you know, it's it's not a cooperative game for sure. Um, here's another picture of it. Like, it is so neat. Like, you have these tiles and they have the roads, so you got to connect roads with roads. And then on the tile in the corner, it'll tell you, is like, well, there's this many buildings and then there's this many humans coming in here. And to break into a building, you have, like, to roll higher than this. And then there's uh, re-rolls that are kind of available for you to pick up and locate and it's a fun, it was a neat thematic fun game. It was just perfect for this season, right? And that was it for the month of October. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, my Instagram is Mel's underscore board game underscore room. And we also have games and couples on Facebook. My Facebook page is Mel and Friends Board Game Room. And there's also game and couple love in the age of board game. And then on YouTube, my YouTube channels is Mel's Board Game Room. And then we also have Games and Couples Love in the Age of Board Game. So be sure to tune in next month to see which games are going to be showcased for the month of November. Bye, everybody.